Hi, I'm Ben Stapleton, here to have a chat today with Matt Oyston and Mark Polverenti from Control Risks. We're going to explore the role that collaboration and trust has when we look at safety in high-risk environments and also integrity management and anti-bribery and corruption. Really critical topics for, for any business. So Matt, just perhaps start with safety and high-risk environments. Safety is you know, really the number one thing for our industry and, and certainly here at Oricon. We have our My, um, my Life Saving Rules, our top 10 My Life Saving Rules, and one of those is travelling to and working in high risk environments. So just interested in the role that building trust has in managing the safety outcomes in high risk environments. Sure. So I think there's sort of two areas that we, we, we talk through and advise clients, the first being understanding the threat environment that you're dealing with. So we look at areas of, of political threat, um, security, operational and, and integrity uh, threat as well, um, looking at uh, the regulations in that particular jurisdiction. So firstly, understanding that threat environment is key. As you can appreciate, um, the security environment in say uh, Port Moresby in Papua New Guinea would be vastly different to say an environment such as Lagos in, in, in Nigeria. So understanding that threat environment for us is key. I think the second point um, is understanding your stakeholders. So knowing from both an internal and external perspective, who are those stakeholders that I'm dealing with? Use an example of um, your, your joint venture partners. You know, it may have an individual that may be politically exposed in, in that joint venture. Well, a change in a, in a political environment may impact um, your ability to operate and actually the safety and security of your, your particular employees working in that environment. So I think doing those two things really builds a level of sort of trust and confidence with your employees that they know, look, this is the environment that I'm dealing with and being able to trust the actual, ex particularly the external parties that you're dealing with by, by carrying out those two tasks. So how does collaboration then um, fit within that you know, building of trust? What do you see in, in practice in terms of collaboration? So say there's a particular project in a high risk environment, what is the sort of security function or umbrella that that particular joint venture partner is going to provide? That might be quite different to say operating in, a, in an office environment in a CBD. You might be reliant upon um, you know, a base building security or the local uh, security services. So that collaboration piece from the start is important. You may recall um, the, uh, the unfortunate events that occurred in Nairobi in Kenya back in January this year. Um, where there were 21 people killed um, during that event. So there was a, a basically an attack on the Doucet um, Hotel. Now, control risk officers were actually located in that same compound. Um, now, the event occurred, there was a lot of obviously commotion, a lot of gunshots that, that went off. And basically, um, one of our lead consultants in our office at the time made it, had to make a judgment call as to basically run or, or hide. So they, they chose to sort of um, shelter in place in, in, in the office. And in parallel with that, one of our consultants, who was actually external um, to, to the compound, um, actually came to, to, to the location and started working with the intelligence and security services. And he knew some of the, some of the people there. So what had occurred was there'd been a relationship built and a collaboration built up over the, 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 the um, previous years with those particular security services. And he was actually be able to relay information between the sort of forward command posts that have been set up and our employees still within the office. And it very much helped both sides to, to use that information and really collaborate um, during, during that event. And I think the final piece of that, which was important was after the actual attack, um, uh, they were able to collaborate with those security services because it became a crime scene basically. And um, they were able to get access to their facility uh, to our offices over the coming weeks when really we were in a, in a sort of business recovery mode. So I think, um, again, going back to the, the collaboration piece was important to be able to sort of operate during that business disruption. Interested in what tips, techniques, tactics that you use or recommend to, to be able to create that environment? Sure, look, I think, I think doing the basics right is, is important and, and this is, going back to my earlier point, doing your threat assessment. And then the follow on from that is, okay, 
is, is the risk assessment itself. So knowing the assets that I have there, the vulnerabilities that I have, and really coming up with a mitigation plan <clears throat> around that. I think the second point is doing some basic security awareness training with your staff that travel to and from the office and even their home environment. So uh, giving some sort of tips and tricks around uh, being more security aware and what are the, what are the responses available um, for our employees. And even basic things like having a communication protocol within your office, you know, if I don't have access to my laptop. I think finally was, is actually having an exit strategy. So if things unfortunately do go pear shape on a project or a, a particular office, um, being able to, to extract yourself from that situation, be it contractually and, and physically, um, at that point yeah, is important. I think they're all really relevant. I know from, from our business perspective, we have people working in, you know, in, in high risk environments in a range of different locations, be it on site, um, in, in, in countries that, you know, where there is a bit more unrest and, and high risk situations. So you know, that, that planning, the, the conscientious behaviour is really critical. So yeah, thanks, thanks for your time, Matt. No worries, thanks, Ben. So Mark, um, interested to have a bit of a discussion about integrity and anti-bribery and corruption. I think there's lots of parallels between you know, managing safety and security in high risk environments and also integrity management. Um, as it relates to collaboration and trust, I, I guess what we see there's you know, business, managing business risk is critical to us, any successful business. When you have operations in jurisdictions, multiple jurisdictions with different cultures, different business environments, um, integrity management and ABC um, is really uh, a key priority. Just interested, Mark, in what are some of the key elements that you use in terms of managing anti-bribery and corruption risk management in, in a business? Yeah, sure. So uh, similar to what Matt was saying, that the first step is really performing that risk assessment and understanding where the risks might come from and where the vulnerabilities might be. Um, and then using that information to assist in designing uh, a compliance program and putting in place policies and procedures and controls that are uh, appropriate and, and um, relevant to the risks that are going to be faced. Uh, so that's going to be the starting point. So what, what part does the strength of a relationship and, and trust play in being able to manage that effectively? Yeah, so uh, trust and collaboration are not the typical buzzwords uh, that you get when talking about bribery and corruption, but certainly they are integral in uh, formulating a strong corporate culture. Uh, and that's in, in, in a post uh, Royal Commission world for all corporates, it's going to be a very important issue uh, designing that robust corporate culture. And you need to be saying to people internally and externally, uh, we have a, a culture of integrity and we operate business in that way. So Mark, do you think if we collaborated more effectively with our stakeholders and our partners that we'd be better at managing these risks? Absolutely. Uh, when you're dealing with third parties, joint venture partners, etc., cetera, um, you need to be assured they are treating the issues the same way that you are. Uh, so communication is key um, to uh, convey your values to those parties uh, and to set the expectations that uh, you will expect them to behave in a similar way. When you have a business that has uh, operations in a range of geographies, you, you need to actually have trust that they're delivering and implementing policies and practices at that local level. And that, that takes a degree of trust that that's happening. How do you go about building that and you know, what, what ideas have you got to, to support that? More often than not now, we're going to be devising uh, incentives in a business to uh, have people behave in a certain way um, and really then it, it creates that two-way street of communication um, and trust in each other that things are, are being done the right way. What sort of incentives? I'm interested in to understand you know, the, the carrot and the stick and I, and I get the I get the stick, you know, the, the policy and compliance, but interested in the incentive component of this. Have you got any examples that you can share? Well, it's uh, depending on the role of the individual, really. Um, and it's certainly an area that's, that's garnering a lot more attention these days, um, but really uh, about um, the number of trainings they might attend, the ability of an organisation to behave in a way that um, minimises uh, certain events that you're not looking to, to have happen. Um, there's any number of ways, depending on the certain role, uh, just really designed in a way to uh, 
guide that human behaviour the way that you're looking to be to guide it. So I think aligned with um, what Matt talked about um, when we're when partnering, when you were looking at working with stakeholders or or partners in a region. Um, setting up policies and procedures uh, and compliance programs is important. So communicating with those third parties is, is key uh, in ensuring that uh, the way that they are operating is consistent with the goals that uh, you have as an organisation. Um, that They understand really how you operate as a business. Uh, it's not a one-stop, set-and-forget process. It's a, an iterative process where you work together um, to achieve that common goal. Um, but you also have those uh, contractual issues in place, the rights of audit, um, those things to be able to monitor behaviour and, and to um, not only uh, encourage that behaviour but to also ensure from a compliance perspective that behaviour is coming forward. I, th I think one thing we find when we, you know, we're bidding work and we're, we're establishing projects in various regions is there's this tendency to, to rush to get into the project and I guess what I've learned out of this discussion is that, you know, the importance of not just assuming our expectations are the same as our partners and, and having that conscious conversation around safety and security management, integrity management um, with our partners just so that everyone is on the same page and that in the event that something does happen that you know, we're all prepared and all aligned to be able to manage those, manage those risks. I think it's a really imp important piece. Thanks for your time, um, Matt and Mark. Really appreciate it. Pleasure, thank Thanks, you. Man.